All right, let's talk about how to do this. Okay, converting between decimal numbers or scientific notation. So let's write this as an ordinary decimal number. So what that means is, like, look at this one. This means move the decimal no times at all because it's 10 to the 0, so it's just 3.541. This one means move the decimal 10 times, and because it's a positive exponent, maybe move it 10 times in the direction that makes it bigger. Moving it this way would make it smaller, so I move it this way to make it bigger. So 9, let's see, what would that be? 0, 1, 3, 4, 5, 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 times. Again, we check 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 times. We put a comma every three in order to make sure that it's clear what it is that we've got, and it's that, which is uh, 90,134,580,000. All right, onward. And by the way, there's no zeros at the end, therefore there's no decimal points here. All right, so uh, here there is a zero at the end, so there's going to be a decimal of some kind going on here, potentially. Um, move the decimal twice in the direction that makes it bigger, which means one, two times this way, so that's 514. Point zero. This, on the other hand, has no zero here, so there's no point zero at the end, just 514. This is moving two decimal places, but in the opposite direction, the direction that makes it small because it's 10 to the negative second. So what that means is 5.14, but the decimal goes the other direction that makes it smaller. So 1 and then 2, so 5140, it goes 1 and then two places, which puts it here, and adds a zero. And of course, never have a naked decimal, so you want to have a zero before your decimal, if it's less than one, which this is. And then, so it's five, 0 0.05140. Yes, if there's that zero in scientific notation, that means it needs to appear on the decimal as well. So that's that. Uh, if there's no zero present, then that just becomes 0 0.0514. Although your calculator treats these numbers the same, what it really represents is this is a more precise measurement than this one. All right, anyway, onward. Mm, this times 10 to the first, this means move the decimal one place in the direction makes it bigger, which is 80.100. Yes, make sure if it's in the scientific notation, that means there's going to be some sort of decimal going on somewhere. Um, if, uh, let's see, same thing, but you notice there's only one zero after that one instead of two of them. So you get 80, let's make that more clearly, an 8. So 80.10. Now that's a little more space than I should have had, but you get the idea. All right, onward then. Uh, same number, but now it's there's no 0, it's just that it ends with that 1. So it becomes 80.1. And now we've removed that 1, it just becomes 8.0. That becomes 80, and you have a decimal point there at the end. So if you see zero in the scientific notation, oftentimes it tells you there's a decimal point somewhere. If you just see eight, then that means 80, but with no decimal point. Because again, you move it one direct, the decimal one direction makes it bigger, which is 80. And if there's no zero, then no decimal. All right, so anyway, uh, or at least no trailing zero means no decimal. All right, so onward now to convert these to scientific notation. So you notice there's a decimal here versus no decimal here. So this one, no decimal. We're just going to move the decimal. We're going to move our uh, 1, 2, 3. Our theoretical invisible decimal will be 1, 2, 3 places to turn to 8.24 times 10 to the third. We had to move the decimal three times. And because there's no decimal here, the zero does not appear in the scientific notation. Because there is a decimal here, this zero will appear in the scientific notation. So 8.240 times 10 to the third. Same here, because this decimal is present, both these zeros will appear in the scientific notation. These trailing zeros will both appear. So that's 8.2400 times 10 to the third. Now here, this number is in scientific notation already, but it's not correct, because scientific notation, this must be between 1 and 10, and it's not. So uh, there's a couple ways to go about doing this, but either way, you're going to wind up converting it to a regular number. So 7.1 or 71434 times 10 to the 6. So let's move that, the decimal is here. Let's move it six times in the direction that makes it bigger. One, two, so one, two, 
three, four, five, six times. So that's seven, that's a comma here, a comma here. So 714,340,000. So seven fourteen three forty thousand, and let's turn that into a regular scientific notation. That means one two three four five six seven eight times. You gotta move the decimal eight times to turn to that seven point one four kind of business between one and ten. Seven point one four three four times ten to the what was it again? Eight times. A little quick sideshow, you could also do that with your calculator, so I just uh, clear the memory, and then I 700, oops, 714.34 times 10 to the 6 is done by, in this particular model by second function EE6, and it will turn it into a regular number, and then I can use second function, and then this button right here, this one, go to scientific and select and it'll convert to scientific notation for me, that times 10 to the 8th, just like what we had. So you can do either one, it's fine. Um, okay, onward. 712. We move the decimal two times in order to turn to 7.12 times 10 to something. And since you had to move it twice, we put a 2 here. And because it's a big number, it's a positive 2, not a negative 2. Here, this is just a 3. We don't need to move the decimal to turn into a number between 1 and 10. So it's 3 times 10 to the 0, because we don't need to move the decimal. Here, this is 3 times 10 to the negative 1. Why is it to the negative 1? Because it's a number less than 1, so that's why it's a negative exponent. We had to move the decimal once to make it a number between 1 and 10, so that's why it's a 1. And then 3, not 3.0, because there's no zeros after this 3. Although a decimal is present, there's no zeros after the 3 here, which means there's no 0 after the 3 here. All right, um, onward. 30, there's no decimal, so it's just going to be 3 times 10 to the first. 3, not 3.0, but 3 because there's no decimal present. 10 to the first because you got to move the decimal one place to make it a number between 1 and 10. And positive 1, not negative 1, because it's a big number, not less than 1. So that's why it's a positive exponent. This, on the other hand, will for sure be a negative exponent because it's a number less than 1. It's a decimal. So 1.45, I can already say it's going to be that times 10 to some power. So uh, let's see, we've got to move the decimal one, two, three times. And because it's a small number, it's 1.45 times 10 to the negative third. All right, now here, 0 0.045 times 10 to the third, 0 0.045 times 10 to the third is one, two, three. So that's 45, because this makes it bigger. So you got to make it bigger. And then 45 is 4.5 times 10 to some power. Move the decimal once, so it's once, and it's bigger than one, so it's a positive exponent. So 4.5 times 10 to the first. Again, your calculator could have done this. Let's see, what was that, 0. 0.045? Let me make sure this is visible, yes. 0.045 times 10 to the third is 45, and you put that in scientific notation, 4.5 times 10 to the first. So that's what that's all about. Now, if you were to do this times 10 to the negative third, that means 0 0.045. You got to make it even smaller. 1, 2, 3. So it's decimal, and then you're leading 0. So it's 0 0.000045. And what is that? That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times. You got to move the decimal to turn it into a 4.5. So you got to move the decimal 5 times, and because it's so small, it's a negative exponent. And again, calculator will do that for you. Let's see, 0 0.045 times 10 to the negative third is that. We convert to scientific notation. 4.5 times 10 to the, negative fifth, to the negative fifth, just like we saw there. All right, well, that's how you go about doing it.